This is the haunted house ride. It is finally done. So let's take a look at how it works and then dive deep into all of the mechanisms and the motors and stuff that is going on inside of it. It is time to go into the details of this module, so let's first turn it on. I have a little handle here. You can hear the custom firmware of the NXT starting, and if I pull it again, it turns on. So let's activate the loop, have the girl go into the house. She's lucky, gets inside, detected by the light sensor. Now it pulls out for a little bit in case there's another person trying to get in causing the doors to get jammed, but she's getting pulled up to the top. The window is opening and you can see her here in the top where the light is flashing before she gets down again and the door opens. So that is the main loop. Now let's take a look and see what's going on inside. You can take this part of the roof off and then see what's going on here in the top. I'm putting the little girl in again. She should come up here, push to the window from below and then that's how the windows actually open. So let's see, now she is lifting. And you can see the lift is pushing up here, the light is flickering, and she goes down again. So up here in the top, you can see what has been changed the most. In the beginning, I just had a normal window in the front, so pretty similar to what you see here, just with dark frames, and people couldn't really see what was going on inside that people were being lifted up and down, so nobody were really interested in this ride. Then I changed it to add this little sensor here. It's a light sensor, but it can also be used just to flicker the red light. But it still wasn't enough, because people couldn't really peek through the black window in order to see what was really going on here in the top. Then I made a version where the window opened inwards, and again the same problem arose, because when a window up here just opens in once, people don't really recognize that it opens. So I changed to this design here, with the window opening outwards. And if you can look at the bottom right here, then you might recognize it from an official LEGO set, and that is the official LEGO Haunted House, which has exactly that kind of opening mechanism for the window. The doors just look like this instead. I just copied that mechanism because it was better than what I had devised myself, so there was no reason to try to improve on the design for LEGO when it was working perfectly fine as is. I just changed the window to be these smaller windows here, instead of this huge storm, which is brown in the official set, but I don't have the official set, I just copied what they had. And that's because the mechanism I had to open the windows was using some silicone bands and was really not reliable. It was putting a lot of strain on the motors. Talking about strain on the motors, and that is one of the biggest problems of this module. So let's take off the house and see what is going on underneath. And let's pull it up. Like that. And then it looks very much like what you saw in my first video. Not much has really changed down here. And as for the house itself, it has also not changed so much. Let me just put the camera down, like that. You can see there's some funny angles going on, some decorations with some tree pieces, or some greenery, and I've changed a bit here in the top of course, I have this new window that can open, but also using a grey frame because it really highlights what's going on in the window, and using a part here that is at an angle because that looks more like what you see in the real game. And that's also why I have updated the whole roof to look like this, because that really looks like in the real game. And speaking of the real game, it's really both in 2D and 3D. This is what it looks like in 2D, so that's pretty spot on. But in 3D, well, this was very early 3D, back in 1995, when this came out to the PlayStation. So yeah, that uh, doesn't look too good. I've also skipped a little bit here in the back. You can see I have easy access to what's going on inside without really having this part visible of the module. I've also blacked out the windows back here in order to save some parts. But that's enough of the house. Let's take a look at the mechanism. It is NXT based, but this is not the initial NXT I had in this module because that unit burnt out. It's also not the original battery because that battery burnt out. 
The reason why the NXT and battery burn out is of course unclear, I can't say it with certainty, but I noticed this module put a lot of strain on the motor that I have here, lifting the lift. This motor here, when it was in the low position, was really tensed up pretty much all of the time due to poor programming by me, but also just using the rotation sensor and also find out that the uh, lift is all the way down is not really good practice. That is why if you look closely right here, you can see there's a little yellow thing and that is actually a touch sensor from an RCX. You can see the touch sensor gets activated. So it is also able to detect that the lift goes all the way down. The second motor here is the one that is running the track, just like in the uh, coffee shop module. So the track can go in one direction outside and in two directions here and in the inside and it goes up and down exactly like in that cafe module. The door mechanism for opening is exactly as I showed you in the initial video, so you can go and watch that for how that works in detail. And I put this little sensor here at an angle because then it's really good at detecting the people who are getting in. And as you can see, I did some trickery here with some technique parts in order to make that work. Since this module only uses two sensors, two motors, I do have a motor port and a, oops, a sensor port and a motor port free in order to run another module, just like the coffee shop. And you can power such a module if there's a need for that. But what is also important is that since I had to update the software while it was having the, the whole house on, I've also done so that you can actually add the USB cable without taking off the house. And of course, you can power the module here with the power supply directly without having to lift off the whole house here in the top. So that's just convenient for me as a designer of the module to have it like this. Let's see if I can get it nice and slowly. And that is what I wanted to show you of the details inside of this module that has been upgraded sometimes since you saw it last time. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. There is going to be more of them on this channel.